Hi everyone, Kat here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting a field of poppies. There's lots to do, so let's get started. To start this off, I'm going to start with a, a large brush. I'm going to spray my paper. I'm using my Fabriano Artistico 100% cotton paper. It is my favorite. So I'm going to just um, brush the the water out evenly. It doesn't. You don't have to have a ton. Just just evenly across your paper. And I'm going to go in with some reds and and um, oranges. I just want to establish where they're going to be, my poppies. And because it's wet, it's going to disperse quite nicely. I'm just putting some reds in first. This is called Pyrrole Red. And uh, this is part of a core set, my core set. Q-O-R, in case you've never heard of it. And they're known for, their pigments are known for, for dispersing quite, quite well. Okay, I'm just gonna spray this one more time. This is just gonna be the first layer. So I wanna add some different colors to my paper. And I like when there's orange on, on my poppies. If you don't like it, you don't have to add. You can add pink. In fact, I think I might add some pink to a couple of them. So I have magenta here. There, that that's the pink. Or I have alizarin, oh, excuse me, alizarin crimson. That's like a red, a cher like a really, um, it's a cool red. So I think I'm gonna go in with some of that too. And as you can see, I'm not being too careful about where I'm putting anything. This is the second time I'm doing this painting, actually, because I I did one. I, I'll show it to you. I did one, and there's one flower that I can't stand how it turned out, so I'm getting rid of that painting real quick. It's so hard not to get carried away with yourself when you're doing, when you're doing this kind of water... Um, dropping your paint in an already wet page. I, I love it. I just love to watch what happens. So it's hard not to get carried away. <laughs> but if you do, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You just start over again like I had to before. So I'm going to add some different shades of green in here. So I'm going to go with, this is Daniel Smith um, Sap Green. Dan I have all different favorites. So I have favorites from Daniel Smith. I have favorites from Windsor and Newton. I have favorites from all different companies. I'm going to put a tiny bit of blue up here just because it's there. As you can see my paper is drying up here. I'm also going to mix a bit of the yellow with my sap green so I can get a variation in my in my greens. And of course, it's just the first layer, so they're going to be much darker later. And it's okay if they if they mingle right now. I'm trying to get them to mingle, actually, without making brown. That's what I want to happen. I'm just putting in a different shade of green here. If you'd like, you can add a bit of salt. I find this pink is a bit, a bit too pink. So I'm going to add some water and scoop it up. Everything's still really wet. 
So I'm just scooping it up. I'm, I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just getting some off the paper, just a bit. Later, I, it's okay, I'm gonna go in with the, the red again, but I just found that just a little bit much over here. And don't be afraid. Like I said, I did one before, I'm just doing another one now. I, the only reason I didn't, I filmed it, it's still on film. I just, it was over an hour. I just didn't think that it was worthy of your attention. So I'm making another one, but you don't have to make another one. You could just do it for fun. Make another one if you feel like it. And then t for the very last part, I'm going to take some pyro red, which is a really red red. And I'm just going to drop some in. There we go. They're going to disperse. They're going to fade out because the paper is so very wet. And now, this is just a little extra something. Dry off your brush. If you see you have a puddle, because my paper is doing this, it's waving. So I am drying off my brush and I'm going in and I'm sucking up that extra water. And the paint's gonna go right back down in there, but that's why I'm taking off the excess. Because it is going to leave um, a cauliflower that I don't really want. And if you took off too much, or you, you're not, you think you might have, just dab in a bit of color. If you found, if you lost some of your red that you'd like back, you just go in and, and dab some in. The paper's still wet. As long as the paper's wet, you can do almost anything you like. A bit more orange on this one. Orange and pink are nice, and if they mix, they make like a peachy color. So I'm going to let this dry and come back when, when we can go on to the next step. Okay, I'm back now. I think I'm just gonna mark a couple of my, my the centers of my flowers so I can keep track of them. And I'm what I'm debating is whether or not I wanna leave this looseness or if I want to paint around it negatively. I haven't decided that. So while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to just put a light, um, a light center in to some of these flowers so I, I know where I'm at. Because sometimes when you're doing this, if your pencil lines aren't dark enough, you can you can get lost. So I'll take a smaller brush because I don't want I don't want anything dripping too much. I'm going to take some this is neutral tint. And I'll just dab some green for now. Whoops, that's too much green. There. So I'm just going to go in here. It's not, it's not perfect. It's just dabbing it in so I can find my centers because I already can't see what I what I just drew. I think there's one here. Normally my pencil lines show up so well that I can't stand it. Now this time I can't see anything. So before I do this next step, I'm going to draw in where I would like some leaves and stems. So this flower here, if I can see well enough, I think comes like this, the stem. Like this. And then it's going to get, well, it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? It's a field of poppies blowing all over the place. Do your drawing dark enough so you can see it. I, I don't know why that happened to me. I, I really, I went over it twice. So this one. It's going to come down like this. This one is going to be like that. And that one, there's that. So by just establishing your main, your main um, stems, you can, you can just add some, a few leaves that you see that you would like. 
so like I see one here and I think they're a little bit jaggedy the the leaves on a on a poppy but and I think they're kind of low down but I can't be be certain but I think and I don't want perfection in fact I, my my desired effect is just to give the impression that there are poppies here and I'm also going to put in some um, buds there's lots of little buds in a poppy field so they're they're like little oval egg shapes and then they have like a little it reminds me of a shepherd cane there a stick like Mary had a little lamb you know <laughs> Um, so let's start with with this because there's an awful lot to cover here. This is going to be a watery a watery coat and I'm going to go in once again I'm going to use my this is Daniel Smith uh, sap this is sap green doesn't matter if it's Daniel Smith sorry um, and I want a variation of greens actually. So this is called Terra Verte by, by Shin, Shinhan. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to start down here just because it's easier for me. And uh, I think you'll be able to see just fine too. So. And I drew these in so that you could, you could see quite easily where, where I'm at. And this is going to be a fairly light layer. You don't want to go in too, too dark and if you don't have to draw you don't don't draw you can do this painting as a more intuitively you can say oh I see a leaf there let's do that now while this is wet you can also drop in you know a couple of drops of a different color um, the blue that I like I think I'm going to add a, a drop or two just for interest, just because I want to. As you can see, I put more water here than there was on the paper, so it's making a bit of a bloom that I'm not really interested in right now. And I'm going to come in around this leaf. Very, quite watery, quite a watery mix. Now, once it's watery now, but once you have that, if you want to add color, you have to have less water on your brush than you do on the paper. So I'm just going to pop in a, a different color green right there, just underneath. So that's looking kind of interesting so far just coming in under here I'd like to just to just to draw a bit of attention to it oops I went in the wrong color just to draw a teeny bit of attention to that I'm just coming in with a light watery green just to highlight this that bud adding a bit more green variant there a bit variation and around this flower here and it's quite interesting if your layers underneath can show it's beautiful so don't worry about that if if you think oh you can see the pink under the green you can you you want that so can you see what's happening it's starting to come to life so when I come up here because I incorporated a bit of a blue sky just a teeny bit I will still be, uh, I will be using blue to outline this flower as well as some green in the background this is a an escargot go dish that I bought from probably the Dollarama at some point in my life. Uh, and I, I find it perfect to do 
small work. The, the wells aren't huge, so if you're doing like a huge project, or then no. They don't dry out as fast because the puddle accumulates up at the bottom. This first layer I'm going to do blue, and then I'm going to go in with some green. And we can always add more later. We can change it later. And let that just fade off into the background. And it's kind of lighter up here, so I'm really, I don't want to get too heavy handed up here. So I'm going to dab some of this. Be careful of your jar of water. You don't want it to get too, too dirty because green and red, uh, all these all these colors make a brown together so you while it's nice to have a variation of color you don't want your field of poppies to be brown at least i don't think you do <laughs> okay i chose to speed the next part up because it's just more of the same. It's just watching me paint and you can still see uh, how, how I'm doing that. I'm still using a very watery uh, mixture of paint. Um, what I'm trying to do now is uh, give some shape to these, to these flowers and the stems by painting negatively around them. And I do, if, you do, if you go into dark, you see it depends on how many layers you want. You can have this extremely layered or you can just leave it after this i am going to do one more layer and so um, i would like to keep it fairly watery and thin but i do need to change the colors so that when i add shapes over this color you'll see a difference between my first layer and my second layer and so here i'm going around my leaves and my my uh that that's a little bud um i just love poppy fields i think they're beautiful and so if you need to slow this down i know that there's a way to do it in your youtube settings in your video settings and um i just thought it was a bit too long and i wasn't talking here so and i do slow it down every time i have something to say so i hope that uh, that suits you fine. This layer is now dry. So I'm going to take my brush that I've shown you a few times, this handy dandy brush that erases where you may have painted where you didn't intend to. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make some more leaves and some more um, buds. So I'm going in with yet another layer of watery green, um, but I am alternating between the shades. So I'm using bluey green, I'm using dark green, I'm using the sap green. And that way you don't have to paint, negatively paint around every strand of grass or, or stem. You, it, you just imply that it's messy back there, that it's a field. So now I'm going to start working on giving the poppies a little bit more definition, but I don't want to lose the looseness of this painting. So I would like them to start becoming a little more red than they are right now. Very difficult to see my, my drawing, so. I like this a lot, so I'm going to try not to lose too, too much of, of it. Nice watery brush. I don't want any hard lines. And it's darker near the center. I'm adding some cool red because I want the bottom of the poppy to be darker. And 
towards the center. Very watery. There. Hoping to get a few, a few cauliflowers in here because this is a nice loose painting, and I don't, I really like it. I don't want to lose that. Just a teeny bit of watery orange to go on here. I'm going to start over here. I would like to go in with some of my mixture of cool red and warm red. Not very heavily though. I don't want to overdo it. It's a lizard and crimson and pyrrole red. I'm going to wet this one first. Just so we don't lose the looseness. I want that looseness. You see how the water, the, the, uh, the paint disperses? That core paint is known for that. It's really fun. Very fun. Yeah, I want it more red, just like that. And I'll use the cooler, pinkier uh, reds for the shadow. Shadows. Uh. Going to use some of that purple that I made. Pop it in there. Maybe I'll add a bit more blue to it. This one up here is just partially opened. So I'm just going to come in there. Very watery. Soften it out. Clean your brush. Brush it off. Soften this out. I'm just going to define the petals right now. going to add a bit of shadow in this one just because it's still wet and I have that paint on my brush so I'm going to put my arm upside down so it's going to be awkward I hope you can see I come from this side but this flower uh, th that's where the shadow is in, and the other leaf is kind of flipped over towards us so I'm just reinforcing the color and um, dabbing some off where I think I was a little too heavy-handed. So while I'm waiting for everything else to dry before I decide what other details I want in, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put more uh, dark in the centers. Okay, so I darkened all the centers and now I think I'm just going to play around with some of my stems and um, see if I can add a little bit of, of color to them. They're a little bland, but I don't want to make them too green because then they won't stand out. So I may choose a different color. I'll see. Let's see what I end up with. So I end up choosing a blue. So I re, I re wet all the leaves and buds that I want to add a, a, a hint of blue to and just drop it in very gently. Okay, that's still wet. Okay, just here and there. Just like I said, just for a bit of interest. Soften it out and the paint will go where the water is. I think I'm going to add it to the under parts of the stems just to make it look like they're in shadow and and that's the the color I want to use and this is exactly where your creativity is going to come out you're just going to go you just like I forgot I was doing a, a tutorial so I hope that uh, you find this as fun as I do it really is my favorite way to paint I think um, layer by layer and you, you just build up the depth and it I don't know it looks natural to me it's fun it's relaxing 
I really hope you give it a try if you haven't done so already. I have another tutorial out at Sephora's floor painting and many of you seem to like it. So give it a try if you haven't already. So what I'm doing here with my reds is I'm just adding a little bit of color to my un uh, my unopened blooms, uh, blossoms, whatever you call them. <laughs> they just haven't opened yet. Uh, so I am going to show you in a few seconds the painting as it was finished, what it looked like when it was done, because I worked on this a total of two hours, so I couldn't film the whole thing. Um, but it sure was worth the time and I just loved doing it. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And if you did, please consider subs uh, subscribing to my channel and giving me a big like. Thanks for all your wonderful comments. Have a lovely day. Happy watercoloring. Bye bye.